I want to share my personal pain. The new generation skips learning subd when studying graphics. This is due to popularization of ZBrush for hard surface modeling. Now, when new participants come to me for mentoring, I'm not surprised that they skipped subd in their initial studies. And surprisingly, we were able to create a couple of decent projects in their portfolio. But the harsh truth is that it's not enough to just know ZBrush for hard surface modeling. Unfortunately, not all new artists in the weapon art way realize that. With the popularization of using web boolean, new guys can model a fairly large list of objects. It's incredibly cool. I myself use this approach very actively. But there is a catch. Not all elements can be modeled properly using this method. It turns out that hard surface modeling is not only cubes and cylinders, but also smooth shapes and curved surfaces. A classic example is gun grips. They are not only touch the mechanism and other parts of the weapon. They should be ergonomic. As soon as you try to use the hard surface pipeline to solve this problem, pain and convulsive brushwork with smoothening will begin to hide all defects on the model. If you still want to understand the problem, you will start digging into it. And you will come to a conclusion, sub D cannot be ignored. To begin with, Let's look at the strengths of the using approach with live balloons in ZBrush. We need to know its strengths to better understand its weaknesses later on. Let's model the gun slide, analyze the parts it consists of. We highlight large forms, medium-sized details, final openings and other small elements. We estimate the assembly order and can start modeling. Preparing sets of balloon objects is not that difficult. The large consists of slightly modified primitives. We send everything to ZBrush and assemble our model. We end up with slightly loaded list of dozens of objects that literally create one detail. Now, let's consider another example, the gun grips. We already have a pipeline. Let's try to deconstruct the grip using basic shapes. As it turns out, it's not that easy to break this part down into primitives. But what we can do is break it down into surfaces in the main lines. This will be a good starting point for us. By analyzing them, we can easily find anchors, elements in size and constructions that we are already completely confident in, and model them first. We can still use boolean or any other options, but in this example, they will no longer be procedural. They are one of the tools, but not the basis of the work. As a result of this approach, the ability to correct the shape is particularly destroyed. But we can't give up this step, otherwise we'll spend much more time fitting individual elements or building a non-destructing system. There is no logic of spending 2 hours of optimizing instead of 30 minutes of modeling. Even if we make a critical mistake, we still have time to redo the model from scratch 3 more times and not exceed the possible amount of time spent, and such a scenario is difficult to imagine in reality. Plus, we can always backup staging during work, as is the element of experimentation is still present. After all, there is nothing more important than spending 6 hours optimization than 5 minutes of modeling. Just kidding. For me, the most correct approach would be to combine use of subdivision and live booleans. A little pause before we look at the real-life example. I'm currently working on development in my channel, and I open to any feedback. Let me know what I can improve in presentation, design, or even topic selection. Just don't write about the camera, I already know that. Gather money. Let's take another look at the example with the handle. Do we really need precise control over the bolt hole? In reality, this object was probably produced in several stages using different technological approaches. My important rule is, if you can transfer the real-life approach to 3D, you shouldn't do it. This makes the model more accurate and realistic, and simplify our entire process. To summarize, we need to separate the development of the original meshes, whether it's a sub-D model or not, to a certain level where it's not become overloaded I would call this model a refined mid-poly model with correct topology. We will also assemble final version easy brush and procedurally smooth the model to achieve neat bevels. This saves a lot of time. I really dislike doing this process in sub-D. 
It feels like it's taking forever and I'm just wasting my professional life on an important stages. As a result, we get the same handle, but made with truly professional and conscious approach. Now we understand the usefulness of sub pipeline even in moments when we don't use it properly. Exploring different approaches will expand our fundamental understanding of for graphics. The ability to simplify work without losing quality and never has harmed anyone. Now you can just send this video to your junior if you have a debate. I won't ask much in return, just the hit like button and we are good. Subscribe to the channel and let me know if you had similar conversation with your colleagues. It's interesting for statistics. Bye bye!